Hi. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, this body standing here in front of you is not quite human. This is my avatar, my double, manufactured by double robotics. And in case you're wondering, my biological body, the one my wife will not uh, let go of, is currently far, far away. It's uh, in uh, Pastoral Rhode Island, and I'm connected to this robotic avatar through the internet. And I have to tell you, this leads to some bizarre situations, really, really strange. Because in the last year, I've been living in the United States in my biological body on the one hand, but at the very same time, I was giving weekly lectures in Israel um, by logging wirelessly into my robotic body there. And I know the robot looks a bit clunky. I know it looks a bit ridiculous, but it has a lot of the functionality of a real body. I can see whatever it sees. I can hear whatever it hears. I can even enhance my meager human capabilities with the robot's night vision. And in other words, I've become a cyborg. I have two bodies now. One of them is biological, and the other is electromechanical. And any message sent by my nervous system back here in Rhode Island, in my biological body, leaves my body, goes over the internet, over 10,000 kilometers of uh, optic cables, of cellular antennas, of communication satellites. And that message is received less than a second later in this robotic body that you see in front of you on the other side of the earth. So my consciousness, in effect, exists in two separate places almost at the same time. And from the moment I've seen just how useful it is to have two bodies, I, can, I couldn't stop acquiring more bodies. I've begun taking over bodies all over the world. I visited China as a white, short, and elegant robot. And I was amazed at what I suddenly learned. Because people treated me completely differently. They just couldn't take me seriously at my height of 90 centimeters. They told me I looked cute, cute. So I became a child again. Nobody tells me I am cute in my biological body. But, and now I understand better what my four years old son feels like when he's talking with adults. In another case, I accidentally logged into the wrong robot in California. It turns out that that can happen. And the robot was mute, was deaf. I couldn't make contact with other people. They ignored me completely. And for the first time ever, I realized what it truly really meant to be trapped within one's own body, to be powerless, to be helpless, incapable even of calling for help. And today, I still move from one body to the other as the need strikes. It could be in China or South Korea, in Milan or Paris or Dubai, and I can't help thinking that I've become a bit more than human because I'm no longer completely bound to one body, to my biological body that I was born with, to the DNA that is my heritage. And the good news is that soon, if you wish to be, then you too will be released from those boundaries. Because together with my partner, Salava Garber, we've created the Tell Body last year. And our goal is to allow every human being to transcend out of their biological body and appear wherever they wish to be. And we don't manufacture our own robots, but we work with all the brands all over the world to provide every person with the robots they need at the time they need. And we're already changing the world. We see the world changing around us because just within a few, a few months, we've already given an ALS patient, a quadriplegic who can only move his eyes. We've already given him control over a, robo a robotic body. He could see out of the robot's cameras. He could hear out of, out of the robot's microphones. And he could even control the robot and make the robot move to the left, to the right, make a complete turnaround. Basically, we replaced his dysfunctional body with a very real functional body that he could take control of wherever he wanted. And we are currently working with Professor Nathan Interator from Tel Aviv University and with Neurostil to enable quadriplegics all over the world to control robots just with their brains, with a simple uh, EEG headband. Another, another success that's really been amazing to me has been in Tel Aviv University. 
in the love executive education where we've given what may very well be the very first robotic course in the world. Some of the most acclaimed futurists and thought leaders in the world have logged into the robots from different countries. They gave lectures, they supervised brainstorming events. Sorry, the robot. I'm not perfect in my, in my robotic body yet. They gave, they, they gave workshops and not just uh, any futurists, they also had this amazing futurist, a Pakistani futurist, Boryut Chaudhary, who logged into the robot and lectured about, about global trends in front of the Israeli students. So she gained the ability to move between bodies and she could therefore bypass all political barriers between Pakistan and Israel. She could share her knowledge and her experience without worrying about the geopolitical limitations. And I could go on talking about our activities endlessly because the possibilities are endless. You could have another body wherever you like. And if you ever wanted to, to visit Israel, but you were always afraid of the, well, of the heat, then you should know that, we, that now there are even robotic tours. And you could visit the holiest sites in Israel using robots. But the most exciting project for me, even beyond the holiest sites in Israel, is that of the meeting of minds. You see, together with HCRI, with Humanity Centered, Centered Robotic Initiative in Brown University, and with the media giant Futurism, we are now working on the first conference in the world that will only have robotic guests. And thought leaders from all over the world, including enemy countries, Israel, Iran, Pakistan, India, China, America, everyone, they will log into the robots, they will sit in the, with, using their avatars, they will sit uh, around the tables and they will talk with each other and debate how to change the world to the best. And this is something the virtual world does not allow easily. We've seen how important it is to have an avatar, to have an actual body that you can use. We call it the meeting of minds because we believe that this is how people will meet and will consult with each other using robotic avatars, even when they live on the moon or in space colonies. We are going to use robots to bring people together. But that will not happen if we remain fearful of the past. And I've learned that myself a few months ago when I invited the Israeli representative to take part in an event in Brown University that dealt with the future of the Palestinians. Now the representative, the Israeli representative, logged into the robot and spoke with the other visitors to the event and shared with them the Israeli point of view. And I left the place that evening feeling that we made a real difference in the discourse because suddenly everyone's views could be represented in a, in a single panel. But a few days later, the headlines in the news suddenly screamed. And imagine my anguish when I, when I saw what they, what they said. They said that the Zionist government sent a surveillance drone to harass, intimidate, and accost students at Brown University. And, well, <laughs> that was a, com a complete shock to me. But, you know, I can't really blame this, the journalists who wrote that. They are bound by the, by the myths, by the preconceived notions of the past and the present. They still think that robots can only be used by governments, by militaries. But this is no longer the case. Robots are quickly becoming accessible enough for everyone, for you and, the, and for me. And when they become accessible for everyone, every person will be able to use them. We will all become more than human if we want to. We will all be able to transcend geography, to transcend bio biology, to be wherever we like, whenever we like, and in any body we choose. And this is just the beginning. This clunky robot that you see in front of you is just the first com Apple computer to reach to the masses. It's just a prototype, a caricature of the human body. And as our technology develops, and advances, we will be able to create better models of, of our new bodies. We'll create them from synthetic materials and from biological materials. We'll embed sensors in them. We'll control them with our minds. And we'll use them to experience all that, we'll, all that we want, to sense all that there is beyond our human senses.
we will make them as large or as small as we like. And no person will be limited anymore by the biological constraints that he or she were born with. A human body will be just the beginning and we'll be able to be free, to be free, to be free, to, uh, to be more than human. As long, of course, as it is made in China. So I invite you and I challenge you, join me and together we can all free our minds from our bodies. And in the words of a truly great man, join me and together we can rule over the galaxy. Thank you for listening.